about like what's the current state of research in uh, anti-aging? Yeah, sure. Well, we've gone through phases. Every 10 years, there's a new phase and we're just about to enter a new one. Uh, in the early 2000s, uh, we were excited about longevity genes, controlling our body's survival, uh, and connecting that to dieting and exercise. Um, and we, you know, we can talk about that later. There's a lot in my book about why exercise and, and fasting is good for you. Uh, but in the last few years, there's been a real breakthrough in understanding um, the fundamental reasons that cause aging. And we've declared that there are about eight hallmarks of aging things that go wrong in our body that need to be fixed if we're going to live a lot longer. And uh, I won't go through all eight, but uh, your listeners, your viewers may have heard of some of these, telomere shortening, mitochondrial right. dysfunction, uh, senescent or zombie cells uh, accumulating in the body. Uh, but what I've always been fascinated with is whether there's a single unified reason we age, not just having eight tributaries or rivers, but is there a, a major upstream river that if we block that all of these other things don't occur or if we cause that to happen quickly do these other hallmarks happen more quickly and i propose what's called the information theory of aging and that is that we lose what's called epigenetic information and that leads to all of these other hallmarks of aging and if we can slow that down or speed it up then the other hallmarks should either slow down or get speeded up as well and that's what we're finding in my lab and as i describe in my book mm. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 a very uh, interesting uh, idea. So, can you like talk about more of this epi epigenetic theory of aging? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I could talk all day about it. Um, so, there are two types of information in the body that keep us alive. Um, without either of them, we'd be dead in a second. Uh, the first we know about, uh, most people know about, DNA, the genetic material. This is digital information, uh, similar to uh, when we used to have uh, DVDs, it would be the music that was on the DVD. Uh, but then there's a second type of information that's just as important for our lives. That's the epigenome, which is the machines and structures in the cell that hold the DNA in, in certain uh, loops and packages that tell the cell what they should be and what they should stay. So okay. epigenetics is what keeps a cell a nerve cell and not a skin cell and what keeps a liver cell not turning into a, uh, a, 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 a kidney cell or, or a cancer cell. Mm -hmm. And what people haven't thought about is what happens to that information over time. Uh, and, but more recently, a number of labs have realized that the loss of epigenetic information, how cells read the DNA, is just as important, possibly more important for aging than the genome itself. And in fact, we've realized that your longevity and your health in old age is only 20% genetically determined and 80% mm. is epigenetic, which can be modified by how you live your life. Mm. That's, that's quite phenomenal, yeah. And it comes to show that you don't have to necessarily age like the vast majority of people do. Like usually you, your close family and relatives tend to really show accelerated signs of aging even after their 40s and 50s. So <laughs> it comes to show that you can actually change it and uh, control it to a certain extent. Right. So I started seriously testing things on, on myself, diet, exercise in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, I started taking some molecules in my 30s. Um, I don't regret it. Some people ask me when's the right time to start. You know, we are aging from, from conception, actually. We can now measure a biological clock in blood. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that aging doesn't 50. It starts when you're born or earlier. Um, right. So, I, you know, I'm not suggesting try dangerous medicines when you're a teenager, not at all. But I'm saying that living a healthy life that activates your longevity genes, make sure that your DVD in your cells doesn't get scratched. And so mm -hmm. the cells can read the genetic information late in life. Uh, that's what I do. I don't recommend anything. Everyone can live the life they want. And I don't want anyone to live longer than they want to. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to do is to give people information about how to live into their 80s, 90s and beyond in a healthy way. And my body has been uh, a guinea pig for the last 30 years. <laughs> well, you're like 50, if I'm not mistaken, and you look great, so it must be working. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you think so. Um, <laughs> I don't have any gray hair. I, I still have some hair left. So it's at 50, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I haven't aged physically in, uh, since I was 20. I mm. might actually be fitter than that. Actually, a, a really good 
example beyond me is my father who's turned 80 uh, mm-hmm. and he's stronger and fitter than I am <laughs> enjoying life started a new career and that's that doesn't really prove anything you know an, an experiment with two people doesn't prove something mm-hmm. placebo effect is pretty strong but our relatives haven't lived this long before but they certainly haven't been this healthy um, so something might be going on here but if nothing else, it's a beacon of hope for all of us. For sure, for sure. And at least like your subjective quality of life is better, <laughs> even though it may be not always uh, accurate or not what you think. Uh, exactly. I hope to measure my biological age very accurately. I haven't done that. I've only done a few tests that estimate my age. But based on those studies, uh, my body is much younger than my chronological age 